Wow, I'm very tired this morning, so please excuse me if I take a long time to figure out what the heck I'm going to say, because I'm just very, very tired. So, the end of last week, I ended up finally finishing Summerlings. It took me freaking ever, but I finally finished it, and I didn't really care for it. Uh, yesterday on Monday, I forgot to record anything because it's just, it had just been a very, very long day, and I was very tired. Um, but I did manage to get through like the first 30 pages, I think, of Spellslinger by Sebastian de Castel, which so far is actually quite intriguing. I am really interested in it because it's dealing with a kind of magic that almost reminds me, reminds me of like bloodbending from Avatar The Last Airbender. Um, but it's also kind of got like a Doctor Strange vibe to it where there's like symbols involved and if you've watched Doctor Strange or read the comics at all, the kind of magic that they produce um, is like creating symbols and like certain movements that provide, you know, certain kinds of things to happen. Um, usually in the form of like a kind of a shield kind of thing, but still kind of, the, the, this book, Spellslinger, kind of has something to that effect of it where like the characters are like creating certain motions and movements that are supposedly symbols and they do different things within that uh with their magic and there's different kinds there's ember iron i want to say blood and like a couple other ones and essentially the main character this is all i know really so far of the story is that the main character named kellen is supposedly like the son of the best mage that there is in this entire world and unfortunately for him, he is one of the weakest mages because he hasn't even been able to master one of the elements that he has to master before he turns 16. And apparently in this world, there are like three things that are supposed to happen um, when you go through like your, what they call your trials. Um, like there's so many different things that happen, but basically you're supposed to have gotten all your elements like down, pat, and mastered by the time you're 16. It's like one of the things that's supposed to happen. But Kellen's on like the brink of his 16th birthday and he hasn't mastered any of them while his 13 year old sister has mastered I think four out of either five or six of them if I'm not mistaken. But so the be literal beginning of the story is essentially him dying. Like that is within the first two chapters of the story is him dying because he cannot use his powers. He has no ability to use any of his powers and so he ends up dying because of it. And while he's dying there is this lady, young woman, I'm not quite sure whether she's older or younger, um, who basically comes in and is able to kind of revive him. Or actually not kind of, she does revive him. And apparently this woman in particular is, according to the synopsis, is supposed to be someone who is going to be teaching him how he's going to be able to um, harness his powers or something, or he's going to become powerful in some way with her. Because for some reason, if he doesn't, there's a lot of things that can go wrong with him not being able to have use of his powers and all of that. So it seems very interesting. For some reason, the vibe I also get from it is very Ember in the Ashes. I don't know why. I think it's because there, it's like placed in a more desert area. And for some reason, there's parts of an Ember in the Ashes that I feel like are kind of in a desert area. Like when they go to the, um, I don't remember the name of the town, but it's the town where they have like that moon festival or something like that in a Ember in the Ashes. It vaguely reminds me of that for some reason. I don't quite know why, just there's a lot of things that are popping up in my head as I read it that I'm kind of like, oh yeah, that reminds me of, like this scene from this book and this scene from this book or this person in this show or whatever. It tends to happen a lot with some of the books that I'm reading, but um, so far I'm very interested in it. I mean, I'm not really that far into it. I will say that the pacing of the story is interesting because it's not necessarily fast paced, but the chapter pacing is interesting because the first chapter was like 16 pages and then the next like four chapters I've read have been very snappy, like within five pages and the book itself is like 46 chapters with an epilogue. So I'm interested to see how the rest of the book comes to be, where it's, if it's going to be kind of varied in the chapter length depending on the scenes. I like to think of chapters as scenes, like individual scenes within a story. Um, so I, I'm interested to see how Sebastian is going to play out the rest of his chapters and how that pacing is going to be as far as scene work. Um, because I, there are a lot of times where I feel like the shorter chapters could 
be combined, but I also do like short chapters because I feel like I can move through the book quicker, uh, which is why one of the reasons why I really love Jaden Patterson's work for the longest time and still do. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my general thoughts as of now. There's not really a lot I can say though because I haven't really gotten that far into the book. We'll try to get through more of Spellslinger today. I don't think I'm going to finish it today by any means because I've been having a hard time with finding really the motivation to sit down. I think I'm really just getting burnt out at this point of trying to have massive TBRs and sticking to them. So I'm starting to think that maybe I pull back on the TBRs a little bit. Really just, you know, have so many books that I know for sure I have to read and then kind of use the rest of the month as like, all right, here are some other books I can read for this month if I want to, if I have the time. Because I think in September I have like five arcs that are coming out in, like they're being published um, in September and then I know I'm gonna have to read a lot of the arcs that I have missed out on for the last, over the last couple months because um, I haven't had time to get through them but yeah I think September like the last several months I've said I think they're gonna be catch-up months because I just can't seem to get myself caught up unfortunately and I think though that the next couple months are just gonna be me trying to take things a little slower and really just you know working my way through stuff without feeling like I'm rushing. And then two, once I get to some of my arcs, more than likely there's going to be some that I'm going to end up DNFing because that's kind of been the thing is that a lot of my arcs I end up DNFing um, because I'm not interested in them. And thankfully the next couple months aren't going to be like the book junkie trials where I couldn't DNF anything. Additionally, something I do want to say that I kind of started thinking about yesterday is I'm going to try to start being a little bit more... Um, post a little bit more basically on my blog and on my Instagram. I was going to do those both last night, but I didn't have the time to because I was really busy um, in the evening with getting dinner ready. And I had to do a few things with Robert last night. So um, I do plan though on getting my blog kind of picking up some speed. I would like to be able to post more on it and then also post more on my Instagram because I don't really post on there at all on either of those. The only times I post on my blog are really for like any ARC reviews. Um, which is fine, you know, that's kind of what I wanted to do because that was going to be the easiest for me, but I really actually feel like I want to start posting more on there because I like to try to be a better blogger. I would like to try to have a little bit more time to sit and write stuff that, um, you know, is, expresses my thoughts and things of that nature. So I've been pulling some inspiration from several people that I follow um, as far as different kinds of posts and what I can be, I can do. And then as far as my Instagram goes, I do really want to try to post more on there as well because I don't really post a lot on Instagram. Um, if I do, it's because I'm like really in the mood to post something. And I really want to start put, posting more bookish content. Like I was trying to do that, I think, at the beginning of the year. And then I kind of just fell off with it because I got super busy with my job I had at the time. And then I just never got around back to doing going back to it. But I have some ideas for like posts that I'm going to be putting up this next week. Um, and that's kind of one of my goals is to like, I, I got a new planner and I've been doing weekly spreads on it. Like putting on my stickers and stuff like that. So I'm thinking that you know, with that, it's going to motivate me to actually, you know, do more stuff with it. I've been finding that's very relaxing to do that at the, at the, like, on Sunday nights when before, um, you know, I go to bed so that I feel like, hey, you know, I've got a new week coming up. What can I possibly do, you know, this coming week with all these different things? So it's Saturday night, slightly inebriated, 
because I decided to cut loose a little bit tonight and drink some wine. So this might be a funny clip for all of you. Sitting here, slightly inebriated, I've been thinking about the book that I've been working on now for about the last four and a half years, basically. Um, I'm almost done with my second draft of it, but there's been some complications in terms of accessing it because essentially my new laptop for some reason didn't come with Microsoft, so I can't access my Word document of my book, but that's okay. Um, it's like 40 chapters right now, and I'm on chapter 33 of my revisions, so I'm nearly done, which is awesome. But there's been something that's been really bugging me for a really long time with this. And partially it has to do with the length, but it's also because I have a main character who has a love interest. But he's not only like a co-worker of hers, but he's like her actual partner. Like she's a cop, uh, in the, or she's an FBI agent really, and then her partner is the guy she has a thing for. And she's had this rule her whole life that she never dates a co-worker because it was something her dad always told her never to do because he used to be an FBI agent and he had his own problems with relationships with co-workers. And so he always told her to never have a relationship with a co-worker. And yet she has these really strong feelings for her co-worker, Rick. Um, and the whole time I've been writing this, it's been like very, very hard for me to write the romantic scenes with them because it's almost like I'm uncomfortable writing them and I don't know why, but I think I finally cracked it in my slightly inebri inebriated brain. And it's because I've been writing in the wrong freaking genre. The, when I first like had the idea for this book, it was gonna be a young adult. And I realized I'm talking really loud, so I'm sorry, I'm gonna try to tone it down. But it was gonna be a young adult book. Then after I finished the first draft, I realized, no, it's going to be new adult. It's going to be these characters are in their early 20s. And then logistically, I've realized that, no, that's not going to work. So they had to be in their late 20s going into maybe their early 30s. And the entire time I've been writing the second draft with that age range in mind, I've still struggled with the idea of writing romantic scenes for them. And I figure, finally figured it out. It's because I still think I'm writing it as a new adult novel when it needs to be an adult novel. So guess what that means? I might be including sex scenes in this book. Holy crap. An adult book with sex scenes. Who would have thought? I'm still writing in the sense that I'm writing for a new adult book. Which nece doesn't necessarily like change anything. I think that now, though, I have a better understanding of, like, where I want this to go and how I want these scenes to be written because I was still feeling like I was holding back a lot with some of these scenes in terms of especially my main character's, like, approach to these scenarios. I mean, mind you, she's really, really timid about their relationship. She really doesn't know where it's going. She doesn't know if it's even a thing or if she's just imagining things are happening, but she also doesn't even want them to happen. She's a very complicated woman. But the fact that I've realized that I've been writing for the wrong genre has been really, really helpful because now I feel like when I go to write these scenes, like work on these scenes again in the next draft, I might be able to move the relationship a little quicker. I think that there might be a point in the book where these guys hook up and it's really going to affect how she is with the case she's working on because the whole book is like she's working on this case but she's dealing with her romantic feelings for her partner and it's kind of getting in the way in some ways about that, but she's also dealing with the fact that her father's murderer is still on the loose and they're trying to nab him. It's a really long story, but I, not even really a long story because it's not even like 200 pages at this point, but it's a, it would be a long story to try to explain to you guys everything that's in this book. But I'm just really happy to know that I think I finally cracked my problem with this book. Hi guys, so it is about 11.30 on Sunday and I've been up for about a little more than an hour, I guess. Um, I have a list of things that I 
want to do today, I kind of do this every day where I have a list of things that like, especially on the weekends, I, you know, have, whether it's like recording videos or stuff. Um, but for right now, for some reason, I'm just really in a reading mood. Like I really just want to do nothing except sit and read, which is good because I'm quite behind on my reading stuff that I've had. So my goal then is pretty much for this entire day to finish Spellslinger. Um, I am about 59 pages into it. It is like 370 some pages long, 372. So I've got quite a bit of work to do today and I probably could finish this today if I start now. Um, I do though tonight also have to go get groceries and do laundry with Robert. Um, so he's probably not going to get up though till this evening because he had to work late last night again. Um, so I am going to try to finish this today. I really have no idea if I'm going to be able to do any of the other stuff that I wanted to do today um, because of it, which honestly is fine. It's not that big of a deal. Like I was just going to do some research and put a couple, like a, a post of my blog and on Instagram and make a new weekly spread for my planner but um they're kind of just not my priority right now like I really just want to sit and read like it, for some reason I'm just kind of not really wanting to do anything except this so I guess now is a better time to do it than never because otherwise I probably won't get through this before I have to take it back so because I have to have this turned back in by Wednesday so I want to try to finish it and then take it back to the library um, after I get out of work tomorrow. Hey guys, so it's about 5.32 in the evening right now and I just finished Spellslinger by Sebastian de Castell. Um, I really did like this book a lot. There were a lot of great elements to it. I was really surprised with how intricate the political system played a role in the story like I didn't think it was going to have much to do with the story but you find out much later in the novel just exactly how much really the politics play into it and how the politics are affected by the magic that's in it like I really love that about um fantasies in general is you know the the discussion of the magic in the political system and how they kind of work or don't work together and I gotta say this one did surprise me in a lot of ways as far as I think the kind of content that it went into as far as the political system and things that were brought up in terms of kind of the mm, civil unrest that there was if you want to call it that um this is the first book in a series so in terms of it ending in a way that i think was effective for a second book it definitely did leave off on a really cool in uh cool note but unlike a lot of other fantasies i feel like it doesn't have a clear idea as to what is to be expected in the next book which is pretty okay i think considering that really the story is a little bit more open-ended i think i have an idea of where the story is going to go though considering that there is still a large part of the main character's background that he is trying to understand and i think that's going to be kind of how the story progresses is him trying to understand this part about him and growing from that point um but i am really also happy to say that you know it wasn't really um that dry i was really thinking that part way through this book that it was going to be a little dry wasn't really going to be that interesting but i had a good time reading it the one thing i will say is i felt that there were points in the story where the magic system was a little confusing um or points where i didn't quite understand the implications of some things within this culture um because there were so many things happening sometimes in one space that it was difficult for me to understand why things were happening and what was the significance of these moments things of that nature um and in general like i really liked it like i said but i wasn't overall blown away by the story by any means i felt like it was just a really really good um first book to a series but it didn't necessarily like throw me off my feet um i will say there is one character in here who i absolutely love and um he it kind of the best way i can describe him is he kind of reminds me of the cat from the Sabrina the Teenage Witch original series. I can't remember the cat's name for the life of me, but I've been seeing him pop up all over like Facebook and Instagram and stuff where like people are 
making memes with some of the screencasts from the show of his sardonic and sarcastic nature. The, there's a character in this book that reminds me very, very much of that cat. So if you like that kind of humor, um, I think that this is definitely something that you would like because that specific character, I think, is really great to lighting to lighten up the story a little bit um, without making it kind of feel too disconnected from the rest of the story. So overall, I gave Spellslinger by Sebastian DeCastiel a four out of five stars because like I said, I really enjoyed it, but it didn't necessarily absolutely blow me away. I am though interested now though in reading the rest of the series, especially because of this background aspect that I mentioned earlier that I am not sure how it's going to play out with the rest of the series. Um, it's going to be interesting I think because the background of the character that we find out within the story really does affect a lot of things about him and I'm interested to see if from here he grows more in his magic abilities or what he exactly finds out about his background that is, um, you know, something that he's been, he's kind of going for. Um, I really am interested to see how the rest of this goes. So I hope that um, I can get the rest of the series at some point. I had to have this borrowed from a different library as mine did not have it. Um, so I hope that in the future I can get the rest uh, of the books within this series borrowed so that I can figure out what the heck happens. So Anyway, that is actually my last book for the Newts. I have now completed my entire Newts TBR. It is and it's six days left of August, so I'm really happy with myself. Now, that is going to basically be it for me for today. Um, I think that I'm going to just go get groceries. I'm not going to do laundry today. I think I'll push that off to tomorrow um, because i got still quite a few things that I need to do tonight. I'm going to quickly record my childhood friend's Let's Play, and then I'm going to go get groceries and do the rest of my stuff tonight before um, I go to bed. So I'm going to end this vlog here. So pretty much the only thing, though, that I ended up being able to read was Spellslinger. Um, I've been kind of having a hard time with finding the motivation to read, so I was very happy that today I was in, in a very much a reading mood. Um, so I might read a little more tonight depending on how much time I have left in the night before I have to go to bed since I have to work tomorrow. Um, but starting tomorrow I am going to be working on some arcs that I need to catch myself back up on because now that my Newt's TBR is completely done, um, you know, I don't have to worry about those ones anymore. I still will be having uh, another reading vlog um, coming out for next week, so don't worry. Um, it'll still count for the newts, I think, in a way, because it's still the month of the newts, so, um, but it's not going to be counting for anything specifically for the newts, if that makes sense. Like, I'm going to have a vlog still under the newts, but it's not going to be for anything for the newts. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, I am going to head off, and I will see all of you guys in my next video. Bye guys.